Hello, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Let us pray. Father and God, thank you for always revealing your will to us at every point in time. Thank you for your words of correction. Thank you for not just being our Savior, but you have become our guide, the one that leads us. You didn't just save us to wander in the world, but you saved us so that you can lead us home. That is exactly what you're doing from time to time. Receive glory and praise and, and all honor in heaven and on earth. Lord, we ask that even now you speak your word to us. Direct our hearts out to wisdom. Help us to hear from you. Help us to be faithful to your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the early hours of today, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me that he wants me to talk to his children about one type of fear they have in their heart, which is a negative fear. It is the fear of being saved. It is the fear of not being saved. He said many of his children that are already saved, they have this fear in their heart. And Satan is using this fear against them. So he asked me to give this message. I wrote it down and I'm going to put it on the screen so that everyone can see the message. I also want to encourage you that in case you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. If you're on Facebook, please follow this page, like it, and share our videos. Please like and share our videos. As you do that, we will help YouTube machine to suggest our videos to other people. Also, please share this video on WhatsApp and on different platforms so that the truth can get to those who really need it. So I'm going to put this on the screen and read from there. I have not called those that believe and trust in me to be judged, but that they might be saved. All those who believe in me and obey my word are saved. Why do you think that the same love that caused Jesus Christ to die for mankind, that they might be saved, cannot preserve those who, are true, who truly believe in me, in him? I have come to save the lost, not to, not to judge and condemn them. Let all those who are genuine, who genuinely repented and got baptized into the church and follow my word, not save me with doubt and fear in their hearts. I am a loving God who pities his children. The fire of hell is too terrible for me to leave my children to go there and perish forever. Tell my children that the love that saves is able to preserve. Tell my children that the love that saves is able to preserve. That means the love of God that can save someone from sin is able to preserve that person till the day of salvation. Then he said to me, I see the battle in the hearts of my children. Many who have been purchased by the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ. I see how they doubt if they are really saved. This battle is so fierce that many of them are tempted to give up. Tell those who believe in me to keep believing to the end. I don't cast away those I have saved. Let those who are genuinely born again put all their hope in the eternal word of God for the redemption and the salvation of their souls. 
this is what the Lord gave me today. And I decided to bring out some Bible verses that I am going to read um, to us to actually make some explanation. I want to make some explanation about this word from the Lord. Now, I want us to read Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Lord wants us to come before the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, the mercy seat, with boldness. Why boldness? The boldness is because in the Old Testament, before the high priest, we go to the Holy of Holies. He has to atone for his own sins first, and he goes there once in a year before the mercy seat. And then he offers sacrifices for himself first and then for the people. But if he goes there and he is not found clean by the Lord, he will be struck dead. So the high priests usually go there trembling. They go there once in a year. Out of 365 days, or 366 days in the leap year, they only go there once in a year. And they go there with much fear and trembling. But here, the writer of Hebrew is saying, now we have an high priest, not the one that doesn't understand our infirmities. He had put on human flesh, and he knows what it is even though he didn't commit sin. He said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. We go to him for mercy with boldness, because we are operating under a new testament. This is a new testament. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He intercedes for us. His eternal blood speaks for us at all times. His blood is better than the blood of cattle and bulls and goats and sheep. He understands our infirmity. This does not mean that we should intentionally live in sin and come boldly before his presence. That is not what it is saying. What he's saying is that because Jesus Christ has offered himself as the eternal blood of our redemption, the redemption of mankind, because the blood is eternal, the covenant is eternal, because he has paid and because he's the propitiation for our sins. We shouldn't go before the throne of God like the Old Testament high priest, but we should go with boldness. Because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, has taken away the sins of the world. So when we believe in him, we come with boldness that I was living in sin. I have repented of my sins. And I believe that the Son of God is, has taken away all my sins. That is the boldness. So when you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ and you submit to his commandment, you partake in the righteousness of Christ. He came not just to take away the sins, but he lived. He lived the life of perfection. 
So that perfection is imputed unto you. It's imputed to you. I remember I did Bible study in which I talked about types of righteousness. And I said we have inherent righteousness and imputed righteousness. These are the two major righteousness. And also self-righteousness. Imputed righteousness, you don't have anything to do. It is a righteousness that is imputed unto us, that is credited to our account, not because we worked, but because we believe. So when you believe in the righteousness of Christ, you partake in this imputed righteousness that we receive from God. Now let us look at what the Bible says. John 3 verses 17 and 18 says, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So if you believe, if you have repented and you believe, you are not condemned. There are lots of people today who believe that they are not even good Christians. Not because they are living in sin, not because they haven't repented, but because... The devil tricks their heart and tells them that, oh, you are not good enough. You are an imperfect human being. Listen, we don't become perfect the day we give our lives to Christ. Perfection is a journey. If anybody tells you that the day, the very day you repent, the very day you give your life to Christ, or that same month, or that same year, you're going to be perfect, it is a lie. It is a journey. Perfection attainment of perfection is a journey in Christ. Our perfection is in Jesus Christ. A child of God, one that is born of God, please listen carefully, the one that is born of God does not live in sin. But that doesn't mean he becomes perfect in his character instantly because he's still living in the flesh. I mean, he's still dwelling in the body. Even though he lives by the Spirit, he lives in the body. And sometimes he could make mistakes. The fact that you make mistakes doesn't mean that you are no longer a child of God. And that is why we confess our sins from time to time. Because in many ways we offend. In many ways we offend, even though we do not intentionally want to commit sin. A lot of times we sin against God. There are some thoughts that find themselves in our hearts, secretly creep into our hearts, and we entertain them for some seconds. That's a sin. Remember, an adulterer or a fornicator in the sight of God is not just one who has a physical relationship with someone in body contact. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27, if you read to 32, it makes us to understand that he that look at the woman so as to have a passion for her in his heart had already committed adultery in his heart. And that the Bible also says it's not the one that actually commits murder that is a murderer, but he that is angry with his brother without a cause is a murderer. So it is beyond just not being a criminal or a thief or an arm robber or a, a, an adulterer or witch or a, a sorcerer. It is beyond that. You may not be any of those things, but you sin in some ways. But when we make mistakes, should we give up? No. For John chapter, 1 John, Chapter 2 says that, I write to you that you do not sin. But if anyone sins, peradventure, anyone sins, we have an advocate in heaven. Jesus, the righteous, for he is the propitiation for our sins. Not just for our sins alone, but for the sins of the whole world. So, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, uses this mistake is that we make sometimes to accuse us. And he tells us, oh, you know what it to be a child of God. You, he is the accuser of the brethren. He did that in heaven. 
and here on earth he is doing it. He is the one that accuses us before the Father. And he tries to bring this condemnation into our hearts to tell us that we are not worthy, we are not saved, we are not going to heaven. And a lot of people listen to him. What the Lord has sanctified, what the Lord has saved and set apart for himself, do not, you a Christian, don't call it unclean because of your human, petty, human imperfection. Let me tell you one thing. Nobody is entering heaven because of their good works. But people, we miss heaven for not bearing good fruits. Nobody is going to hell because they merit the fire of hell. But people will go to hell because of their evil works that they refuse to repent of. We can actually save ourselves. In this message, the Lord says that the love that saves is able to preserve. If you believed some time ago and you confessed your sins to God and asked the Lord to forgive you, that same power that saved you is able to preserve you until the day of, of judgment that you are going to receive your final salvation. Let us look at the word of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you have the Spirit of God in you? Don't let the devil condemn you. Because a lot of times when people are overwhelmed with these kind of thoughts, they tell themselves, I'm not worthy to be a child of God. So why do I even need to continue to try? Why not I just give up and enjoy my life and just live like every other person? After all, even if I try, oh, I remember a brother told me this. He said, why do I even need to try when I know that I'm, I'm not going to try enough? I'm not going to please the Lord. Why do I even need to try? Because each time I try, I fail. Each time I try, I, I fail. And I recommended a message for him, which I'm going to recommend for you right now. There is a message the Lord gives. The Lord gave me some time ago. It is titled The Revelation of God's Grace. 150 years in hell and the revelation of God's grace. 150 years in hell and the revelation of God's grace. Please listen to that message. It is going to help you a lot. It is on my webs on, a, on my website. The narrowest Christ for all nations, TNWCFEN.org. It is on Facebook, it's on YouTube, the narrowest Christ for all nations. And also my uh, personal YouTube channel, Hosanna E. E. David. Please listen to that message, it's going to help you. A lot of Christians condemn themselves because of petty things. Please do not condemn yourself. Do not see yourself as someone that is condemned. Rather, work on your weaknesses. Now, the Spirit of God in you will be a witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. If you are saved, if you are saved, the Spirit of God in you is going to be a witness that you are a child of God. Let us read. Romans chapter four, Romans chapter 8, 14 to 17, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then hears. Yes, of God and joint yes with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. If you are a child of God, the Spirit of God in you will bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, that you are saved and that 
Spirit of God is in you. It is that sa this same Spirit that bears witness of another genuine child of God. With the Spirit of discernment, tells you this is a child of God. This one is not of God. So let's not condemn ourselves. Does that mean that we don't need to examine ourselves? No, we have to constantly examine ourselves to see if we are still in the faith, if we are still in the Lord. Because a lot of times people could have false hope. Remember, the moment we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we are saved. And as we continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, we are being saved. And then on the last day, when the body and soul will be united after our final salvation, then we will receive our final salvation. When the sheep are separated to, to the left, to the right, and then the goat to the left, we will receive our final salvation. So, as you continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, put your trust in the Lord. I know a lot of times I almost backslide. A lot of times, a lot of times, the Lord helped me. As a matter of fact, 2007, I couldn't live alone in the house. I told my brother I wanted to go and live with him because I knew I had no strength. And he said, no, one day before he came back, I already moved into his apartment. Because I knew that me living with him, staying in the same house with him, in the same apartment, would do me a lot of good. I was facing a lot of temptations. I couldn't just hold myself. And I did not hide my weakness. I fought it. The Lord is able to deliver you from every kind of temptation. He who has begun this good work in you is able to bring it to a glorious end. So put your trust in Him. But from time to time, continue to examine yourself to see if you are in the Lord, to see if you are really still in the faith. This is what 2 Corinthians chapter 13 Verses 5 and 6 says, Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Examine yourself daily and continue to ask the Lord to help you to see you through, so that you can be, become an overcomer. Are you among those that are condemning yourselves, telling yourselves that you're not good enough, telling yourselves that, oh, I'm going to hell, despite you are saved? Know that the devil is able to project thoughts like that into your heart and make you feel condemned. But Jesus Christ did not come to this world to condemn the world, but that, that they might be saved. A, a lot of you are actually having these bad thoughts, these discouragements that makes you to continue to fall backward to your sins because you, don't, you are not grounded in the knowledge of God's word. Next week, I'm going to expatiate on some of these things. Thank you for watching. May the Lord God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you release your blessings upon your children. Help them not to be deceived. Help your people not to be deceived by the devil. Help them to overcome all the accusation of the enemy. Sit on the devil in the name of Jesus. Lord, I cover as many that listen to this message with the blood of Jesus. 
May the Lord God Almighty see you through. The Lord that has called you by His grace and His goodness, may that God see you through. Those of you who have genuinely repented, this message is not to those who are hypocrites, those who are pretending, but it is for those who have genuinely repented and have been baptized into the body of Christ. May the Lord God Almighty see you through. The same power that pulled you out of the world of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of His dear Son, Jesus Christ, may that same power continue to protect you. Lord, I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry. May your power continue to be with them and protect them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this ministry is the same ministry that is providing for us charity organization. As those beneficiaries from time to time continue to appreciate you for your provision, Lord, release your blessings upon the sources of this money in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for your children that you take away problems from their homes. Those who are having problems, Lord, take away the problems. Lord, take away challenges, health challenges from the lives of your children. I pray for as many that requested for prayers, those who are in one trouble or the other, those who are crying to you day and night. Lord, heal them, step into their situation and give the fullness of your joy to your children. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. May the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you. Those of you who want to give uh, details are on the screen. If you look at the description box, you will also see our account details. Uh, very soon, we are going to provide you with PayPal account for this ministry. So those of you who like to give uh, through PayPal, uh, we're going to give you that opportunity. Although for now, I am using um, one PayPal account. Uh, whatsoever thing you give through that one also goes through um, goes directly to our ministry too. Uh, I also want to encourage you that please share this message and subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for All Nations. And as you do so, the Lord God Almighty will bless you richly in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.